talking about cityscapes. And a cityscape is a picture of a city, just like it sounds like. Just like the word landscape is a picture of the outdoors, a cityscape is a picture of a city. And so since we live in Dallas, I thought it would be fun if we drew the skyline of Dallas. Now I'm gonna give you a couple options. You can just draw your cityscape on a piece of paper, or if you have a recycled jar or can and you want to put your artwork um, over that jar to create a pencil holder, I'm gonna give you that option. So if you want your uh, final artwork to be able to wrap around a jar to create your very own pencil holder, you're gonna wanna measure how tall your jar is and cut your paper to be that height because this paper is too tall to wrap around that. So you're gonna wanna measure how tall it is and then cut your paper accordingly. So then at the end, you can wrap it around. Now, if you don't have a jar, you can just do your artwork on a piece of paper and that will be great too. So you're gonna need a pencil and paper to start with. I'm going to be actually using a Sharpie because I want you to be able to see what I'm drawing. So to get started, we're gonna start in the bottom left corner and we're gonna start by drawing this short building. This building is actually the Hyatt Regency in downtown Dallas. It is a hotel and it's um, known by its stair step uh, features. So I'm gonna draw my combination of horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical. And this building is not very tall. So you only want to go up about a, a third of your paper because we have buildings that are gonna be a lot taller. And this uh, hotel is actually connected to one of our other buildings, Reunion Tower. But when you look at the city from a certain angle, it looks like um, it's kind of far off from it. Okay, so once you draw that building, we're gonna then move on to our next building. This building is called Fountain Place and it is known for its slanted uh, top and that's what makes it noticeable in the skyline. So we want our buildings to connect. We're gonna end up painting our whole uh, skyline black to make it look like it's in a silhouette. So I'm going to go up. So this building, it's not the tallest in the skyline. So you wanna go up a little bit past the building we just drew. And then you want to draw a slant. You wanna draw an angle. And then you're gonna draw another angle to make it look like a triangle at the top. And then you're gonna draw another vertical line. And then there's gonna be another slant down here. So this building is called Fountain Place. And it's called Fountain Place because there's actually 172 dancing fountains at the base of the building. And that's what gives it its name. So we've got the Hyatt Regency Fountain Place. Next to Fountain Place is gonna be the Trammel Crow. So we're gonna connect from this line we just drew. We're gonna draw a straight line. And then we're gonna draw a few more stair steps. And then one thing that makes this building noticeable in the skyline is its pointed triangle top on top of those stair steps. So I'm gonna draw my vertical line. This building is symmetrical, meaning that it's the same on both sides. And Trammel Crow, it's actually the sixth tallest building in the city of Dallas. It has an Asian art museum at the bottom of it. The rest of the building is used for office space, but the owners of the building had a large uh, Asian art collection and that's actually um, housed at the bottom. Okay, so the next building we're gonna draw, I'm gonna bet most of you know this building. And this building is called Reunion Tower and it is iconic to the city of Dallas because it because it is a giant ball-shaped building. So you're gonna draw a straight vertical line, then you're gonna draw a ball at the top, you're gonna draw another vertical line coming down, and then a horizontal line. So fun fact about Reunion Tower, there's actually a 
restaurant at the top of the building and the floor actually rotates. So if you're sitting down at dinner, the floor is going to slowly rotate and you're going to get um, a lot of different views of the city of Dallas. It doesn't rotate really fast, so you barely notice that it's even moving. Okay, so we've got the Hyatt Regency, Fountain Place, Trammell Crow, Reunion Tower. The next building we're gonna draw is Chase Tower. Um, this is the fourth tallest building in the city of Dallas. It's gonna be a little bit taller than this Trammell Crow building. So I'm going to draw a straight line up. Now it is known for its semicircle glass top that actually has a little cutout in it. So to draw this building, you're going to draw your vertical line, you're gonna draw a short horizontal, and then you're gonna draw like you're drawing a half circle, but then you're gonna create a little cutout, and then you're gonna finish your half circle. And this building's nickname is the Keyhole Building because it actually has a hole that is six stories high in this building. All right, so the next and last building we're gonna draw is the Bank of America Plaza building. This building is actually the tallest building in the city of Dallas. It's the third tallest in the state of Texas. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this building is taller than any of the other buildings that you already drew. And the top of it is gonna be characterized by those stair steps. And I actually ran out of room on my paper it's totally okay. I actually got most of it in here, but I just want to make sure that it's the tallest out of um, the buildings that I drew. And this one, if you've ever driven through Dallas at night, you've probably noticed the building that has uh, the green lights. That is this building. So I'm going to go and I'm going to add just a few details. Again, you're drawing with a pencil. I'm drawing with a Sharpie so that you can see. Okay, so once we get it drawn, we are then going to grab our markers and we're gonna work on doing the sky. So. All right, so if you're gonna follow along with me, you're gonna wanna get some washable markers, a piece of foil, a paintbrush, and some water. If you do not have a paintbrush and water, you can just color it in with markers. Uh, if you don't have markers, you can use crayons. Use whatever colors you have at home. But if you're going to follow along with me, I'm going to transform our markers into watercolor paint. And to do that, you want to pick the color that you want for your sky. So in this one, I made my sky like a setting sun. So I used red, oranges, and yellows. For this one right here, I'm actually going to make mine more of a nighttime sky. So I'm going to use my blue my purple, and my pink. And we're gonna actually do our sky first before we uh, work on our buildings and making them black. So pick the colors of your sky. Maybe you want yours to be like mine with the warm colors. Put those on your foil. You're gonna dip your paintbrush in the water and then you're gonna dip it in the marker ink and then it's going to start to activate the ink and it's going to act like a watercolor paint. So I'm gonna fill my sky with blue and then I'm gonna start to overlap some of my purple and pink. complete, I'm going to take my black washable marker and I'm going to outline my buildings. Okay, so now that I have my buildings outlined, I'm also going to add some black onto my foil. And I'm gonna dip my paintbrush in the water 
and I'm gonna start to put it on the outline to activate the paint and then to start spreading it to the center of my buildings. So this is gonna create like a light black color. To get it to be darker, you're just gonna keep uh, adding layers onto it. So I'm dipping my brush in the water. I'm putting it over that outline that I just created and then I'm spreading it to the middle. And this is gonna give your buildings a little bit of dimension. And then, like I said, if you would like them darker, just keep adding more ink onto it. All right, so let's fill in these buildings. are filled in, uh, I want you to notice how the colors are starting to bleed together a little bit. That is very characteristic of watercolors. And uh, if yours is doing that, then that is exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Um, I know when people first start doing watercolor, it looks different to them because they're used to more just solid color. But uh, the beautiful thing about watercolor is that it all starts to blend together. So if you want your cities to be a little bit darker, just keep adding uh, more layers of your black. I'm gonna keep mine like this because I like how it turned out. And I hope you had fun with this project. I cannot wait to see your cityscapes. Mm -hmm.